reason to try a shot blaster in here instead of a grinder is that it's such a small space that to bring a big 220 volt grinder in here for what a blaster can do to clean this surface and get it free of any of the latents that are here, plus the dirt, some old adhesive. I'm gonna blast anyway to prepare it for the coating, and I'm also planning on doing epoxy skim. So to blast the surface, to remove what's here, put a little bit of profile on the floor and open up the surface of the concrete, I might as well just try to blast it. I do one mechanical process, it's dust free, and the floor will be immaculate when I'm done, and it'll be ready for an epoxy skim. I almost made a big mistake and left a bunch of adhesive and patching compound on the surface after I had thought it was blasted clean, but once I looked a little bit closer, I saw that there was actually still residue on the surface. Even if the epoxy can stick to it, it's a material that's going to be friable, it's going to be elastic, and it's not going to be something that's going to be able to handle much of a load before it starts to allow the epoxy to move and crack. As much as I don't want to have to come back in with the hand grinder and grind, I don't really have much of a choice if I want the floor to be clean and profiled correctly and also to only leave a sound substrate below that epoxy for which it's going to bond to. 